Peace and Pan Africanism, Peace and Pan Africanism. Peace and Pan Africanism, Peace and Pan Africanism. Peace and Pan Africanism, Peace and Pan Africanism. This is your big brother, King Kong Consciousness, Dr. Umar Ifa Tunde, Intercontinental Ifa Tunde, Notorious RBG, most relevant, most requested, most revolutionary black scholar in the world. Brothers and sisters, I'm not going to keep you too long. I'm not going to keep you too long this Friday afternoon because I know you have things to do and I have things to do. So I'm not going to belabor the issue, but I do want to offer some brief remarks on this Kyrie Irving controversy. I want to offer some brief remarks on this Kyrie Irving controversy. And then I'm going to go in deeper on www.drumar.tv. I'm going to go in deeper on www.drumar.tv. So if you're not subscribed, make sure you go and subscribe to www.drumar.tv. www.drumar.tv. This is just the introduction. This is just the appetizer. I'm going to give you the meal on drumar.tv. This is just the drinks and the salad and the hors d'oeuvres, but I'm going to give you the meal and the dessert on www.drumar.tv. So here's what I want to say. Here's what I want to say. I had hoped that my brother Kanye, excuse me, I had hoped that my brother Kyrie could have held out for another week or so. I was hoping that Kyrie Irving could have held out another week or so. I wanted him to make them sweat a little bit more. I wanted Kyrie to make the untouchable power structure sweat just a little bit longer. I was hoping he would have held out because this would have been the first time in a long time that we've had a prominent black musician, Kanye West, a prominent black musician, Kanye West, and a prominent black athlete, Kyrie Irving, stand up simultaneously against the exploitation of the untouchable power structure. I wanted Kanye and Kyrie to do a joint press conference. I wanted Kanye and Kyrie to conduct a joint press conference. I wanted both of those brilliant, although at times, politically inconsistent, but I wanted both of those brilliant black men to engage in a joint press conference on this issue. I wanted that. The culture needed that. The community required that. I wish he could have held a little longer. I wish Kyrie Irving could have held out just a little bit longer. But with that being said, with that being said, he should not hang his head in shame. Kyrie Irving does not need to hang his head in shame because at least he took a stand. At least he took a stand in an NBA league dominated by black athletes. In the National Basketball Association dominated by black athletes, most of them will never take a stand. Most of them will never take a stand against the power structure. At least Kyrie took a stand. So Kyrie, if you're watching me, my brother, and I'm sure you are, don't drop your head. Don't drop your head. Because at least 
you took that stand and you held out as long as you could. And we didn't need you to be another casualty like Colin Kaepernick. Because if them Negroes couldn't take a knee for Colin Kaepernick, if them Negroes couldn't take a knee against police brutality and genocide with Colin Kaepernick, if your fellow athletes of the NBA couldn't take a knee for Colin Kaepernick, they damn sure, Kyrie. They damn sure, Kyrie, wasn't going to stand up for you against the untouchable community. They wouldn't break breath against the untouchable community. If they can't take a knee for the national anthem, if you can't take a knee for that old crusty song, if you can't get down on one knee in the NFL for that old crusty song, if they couldn't even boycott the playoffs in the bubble, if you can't even boycott the playoffs in the bubble, and you let David Stern tell you you can wear a word on the back of your jersey. This is what the NBA Negroes did. This is what you, this was your protest. Freedom on the back of my jersey. Black Lives Matter on the back of my jersey. Unity. What kind of crap is that? What kind of crap is that? That was the most passive, aggressive, beta male protest I ever seen in my life. Words on the back of jerseys. Adam Silver. Adam Silver. Where police was killing black people. And the athletes of the NBA said, we're going to protest playoffs in the bubble. When the black athletes two years ago in the bubble was going to protest police violence by not playing in the bubble, Adam Silver had a heart attack. You damn near had a heart attack, Adam Silver. And you told them that you'll let them put some words on their jerseys. And y'all want to paint Black Lives Matter on the side of the basketball court. I want y'all to compare what Adam Silver let us do in the bubble two years ago when the Milwaukee Bucks players wanted to protest the NBA playoffs in the bubble. The Milwaukee Bucks stood up and said, nah, they just killed this brother in Milwaukee. Kenosha, Jacob Blake, he didn't die. They paralyzed him. Peace and love to the Jacob Blake family. He gets shot and paralyzed. So the Milwaukee Bucks say, nah, we not playing. We protesting the bubble. Adam Silver says, nah, we're going to let you put words on the back of your jerseys. And y'all went for that. And LeBron James is part of the reason y'all went for that. Because LeBron James was more interested in getting a bubble ring. Mr. Activism, LeBron James, who ain't done no activism yet, he wanted a ring. And so they made y'all sit down for LeBron James to get a fourth ring. Made y'all sit down for LeBron James to get a fourth ring. And then they sent Michael Jordan in to make sure LeBron James would stay in his lane. They sent Barack Obama and Michael Jordan in to have a conversation with LeBron James. And the two biggest Negro male sellouts in American history. Barack Obama and Michael Jordan, the two biggest Negro male sellouts in American history, Michael Jordan and Barack Obama, the two biggest Negro sellouts in American history, Barack Obama and Michael Jordan go have a conversation with LeBron James. And LeBron James says they told him to keep playing basketball. Mr. Activism with a school full of white women in Akron you said Jordan and Obama told you to keep playing basketball. That was your excuse. Barack Obama and Michael Jordan, the two top Negro peons in American history, top political Negro peon, top athletic Negro peon. And you say they made you play basketball. So Kyrie Irving, don't hang your head, my brother. 
Don't hate in your head, Kyrie Irving, because they wasn't going to stand up for you. Them NBA Negroes, they are too in love with that paycheck and them snow bunnies and that materialistic lifestyle. Nobody was going to stand with you, brother. They was going to leave you out there to dry like they did Colin Kaepernick, who still ain't got a job in the NFL yet. They was going to leave you out to dry like they did Colin Kaepernick. Black male athletes are some of the biggest political cowards the world has ever seen. Black male athletes are some of the biggest political cowards the world has ever seen. Black male athletes are some of the biggest political cowards the world has ever seen. So Kyrie Irving, don't drop your head, my brother, and I'm telling you why. One man can't change this by himself. He can ignite the change, but he can't do it by himself, my brother. I applaud you for standing as long as you stood. It is very much a contradiction and a form of hypocrisy. It is very much a contradiction and a form of hypocrisy for Adam Silver in the untouchable community to accuse you of being against the untouchables. When Jeff Bezos, the owner of Amazon, the third richest man in the world, Jeff Bezos, the owner of Amazon, the third richest man in the world, is still selling from Hebrews to Negroes on Amazon right now. Amazon is the largest online selling platform in the world. Amazon is the largest virtual market in the world. So somebody got to help me understand. Why wasn't $139 billion Jeff Bezos, why wasn't he accused of being against the untouchable? Somebody help me out. Why wasn't the owner of Amazon, the third richest man in the world, Jeff Bezos, the largest online selling platform in the world, why was he not accused of being against the untouchables? Why did Jeff Bezos get a pass? Why did the owner of Amazon get a pass? See, I have a problem with selective morality. I don't like selective morality when black people do it. I don't like selective morality when white people do it. Do you know what selective morality is, brothers and sisters? Let me tell you what selective morality is. Selective morality is when you apply your moral principles. Selective morality is when you apply your moral principles to some people, but not all people. Selective morality is when you say it's wrong to abuse a child. But when your friends abuse a child, you overlook it. Selective morality is when you say it's wrong to steal. But when somebody in your family steals, you overlook it. Adam Silver, you are a hypocrite. The untouchable community, you a bunch of hypocrites. If that book, if that video is so disrespectful of your so-called heritage, why are you not attacking everybody who's promoting and selling that video and that book? Help me understand. If it's that bad and Adam and, and, and Jeff Bezos has the largest selling platform in the world. So anybody who wants that book and anybody who wants that DVD, they're going to get it from Amazon. They're going to get it from Jeff Bezos, who's worth $139 billion, third richest man in the world. But y'all didn't send him no letter to cease and desist. When is Amazon Prime going to get a cease and desist letter? When is Amazon Prime going to get a cease and desist letter? When is Amazon Prime going to get a cease and desist letter like the one y'all gave Kyrie Irving? Like the one y'all gave Kanye West? So let me, let, 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 me, let me understand. 
If you white, if you are a Caucasian and you promote information interpreted by the untouchables to be an attack on their culture, it's okay. If the white man does it, it's okay. But if the black man does it, it's a problem. So do you know what that means to me? Do you know what that means to me? I'm going to tell you what that means to me. What that means to me is. This is really not about. Hate against the untouchable community. This is not about. Hate against the untouchables. Because if it was, Jeff Bezos would have been served with a cease and desist. Remove that book, remove that DVD from Amazon Prime. Y'all ain't said a word to that man. Y'all ain't said a word to that man. So you're telling me you openly support the continued selling of a book and documentary that you claim to be against you. You openly support the continued selling and distribution of a book and documentary you claim is against your people. You openly support the selling and distribution of a book and DVD that you claim is against your people. So let me tell you what this is really about. This ain't about no anti this or anti that. This ain't about no hatred for the untouchable community. You know what this is about? This is about the untouchable community tightening the noose around the neck of its black male celebrities. I said this is about the untouchable community Tightening the noose around the neck of his black male celebrities. I said, this is about the untouchable community pulling that noose a little tighter. See, Kanye West, he loosened that noose up a little bit. Kanye West, as crazy and inconsistent as he is, Kanye West loosened that noose up a little bit. Kanye loosened that noose up a little bit. And whenever the slaves start loosening up the noose, the slave master got to pull them back in. He got to pull them back in. Because after all, the untouchable community has made a large portion of their wealth off the exploitation of black entertainers and athletes. Let me say it again. Oh, let me say it again. The untouchable community one of their main avenues to wealth and power was on the backs of African people. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Who are the agents in the sports industry? Not every agent, but the most influential agents in the sports industry and entertainment industry are untouchables. The major agents are untouchables. Oh, yes. How many owners of the NBA teams are untouchables? How many owners of the NFL teams are untouchables? You only have two real music companies left. You only have two real music companies left. And the CEO of both of them are members of the untouchables. The untouchables, according to Russell Simmons' words, according to Russell Simmons himself, Russell said, Russell Snow Bunny Russell Simmons, Snow Bunny Russell Simmons said that had it not been for the untouchables, hip hop may have never taken off. Russell Simmons said if it wasn't for the untouchables, there would have been no fat farm. There would have been no rock aware. According to Russell Simmons, the untouchables invested in hip hop clothing. The Untouchables invested in hip-hop music. This is Russell Simmons talking. Russell said, had it not been for The Untouchables, hip-hop may have never taken off. But let me say this to you. Investment is a deceptive word for exploitation. Investment is a deceptive word for exploitation. See, when Russell says they invested in hip-hop in the early years, 
Snow Bunny Russell Simmons said they invested in hip hop in the early years. So what you're saying, Russell, what you're saying, Russell, is they saw the potential in hip hop early on. And because black people didn't have the wealth to control the financial side of hip hop, stay with me, brothers and sisters, understand, overstand and understand me. Understand, overstand, and understand me. We didn't have the money to invest in hip-hop and keep it a black-owned industry. We didn't have the money to do that. So the untouchable saw that this might be something. This new form of music might be something. So what we're going to do is we're going to give them the seed money to get hip-hop up and off the ground. And after we give them the seed money to get hip hop up and off the ground, we gonna take it over. We gonna own all the rights, all the contracts, the publishing, the performing, the, the 360 deals. And on the backs of gangster rap, on the backs of gangster rap, the untouchable community has been exploiting black musicians Since the early 1900s and they own gangster rap. They own hip hop. They own hip hop. They own it. They own it. The untouchable community owns hip hop. It's theirs. It's theirs. I wonder who ordered the death of Whitney Houston. I wonder who ordered the death of Michael Jackson. I wonder who ordered the death of Kobe Bryant. I wonder who ordered the death of the artist known as Prince. I wonder who ordered the death of Jimi Hendrix. I wonder who ordered the death of Tupac Shakur. I bet you most of them were untouchables. Yep. Yep. So... The main way that the untouchable community became who they are is on the backs of black people yesterday and today. You exploit black music. You exploit black athletes. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You exploit black actors. Yes, you do. Who built Hollywood? Was it not untouchables? Was or was not the founding fathers of Hollywood members of the untouchable community? Yes or no? I'm asking a question. I'm asking a question. Were the founding fathers of Hollywood members of the untouchable community? Are the major sports agents members of the untouchable community? Are the CEOs of most music in Hollywood and sports companies, are they not members of the untouchable community? I'm asking a question. And now you want my brother Kanye, excuse me, Kyrie Irving. They said Sean Marks of the Brooklyn Nets. Sean Marks of the Brooklyn Nets. Sean Marks of the Brooklyn Nets is requiring Kyrie Irving to go meet with leaders of the untouchable community. See, this is the humiliation. This is why I was hoping Kyrie would have held out a little longer because Kyrie, they don't want no apology. They want to humiliate you. Kyrie, they don't want no apology. They want to humiliate you. And this is one thing that Kanye got right. Even though he issued his apologies too, but Kanye understands something a little bit better than Kyrie. Or maybe not better, but he has the freedom to do it a little bit better. Kanye knows they don't want no apology. What do they care about an apology? They don't want no apology. They want to humiliate you. They want to emasculate you in front of your own community this is about domination of alpha male energy this ain't about no apology 
This is about the destruction of revolutionary black alpha male energy. That's what this is. They don't care about no damn apology. All week on the news, what they kept saying? All week on the news, what did they keep saying? All week on the news, what did they keep saying? Uh, Kyrie Irving says he accepts responsibility. Kyrie Irving said he accepts accountability. Kyrie Irving said he embraces every culture, every walk of life, every religion. But then they came back and said, he didn't say, I'm sorry. See, I'm sorry. He did not admit guilt and shame to us. So then Kyrie says, I'm sorry. Y'all want two words? I'm going to give you two words. I'm sorry. And then Sean Marks pops up and Sean Marks said, no, 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 Kyrie. That's not enough. You have to go and sit down like a three-year-old in preschool. You have to go and sit down like a three-year-old in preschool. You have to go and sit down like a three-year-old in preschool and get lectured by leaders of the untouchable community. You have to let them teach you about their culture like you don't already know who they are and where they come from. So now Kyrie Irving has to go sit in the timeout chair. 30-year-old Kyrie got to act like a three-year-old toddler now. 30-year-old Kyrie got to act like a three-year-old toddler now. 30-year-old Kyrie has to act like a three-year-old toddler now. He has to go sit down in the timeout chair and let the leaders of the untouchable community who've been exploiting his people since they got to this country, who've been exploiting his people since they got to this country, he got to act like he did them wrong and let them educate him. See, this is the humiliation. This is the humiliation. They don't want apologies. They want to emasculate you. Cut your damn nuts off. That's what this is about. We're going to embarrass you. What did Willie Lynch say? What did the Willie Lynch letter say? The Willie Lynch letter said, go get you the biggest Negro. Get the meanest, toughest buck you can find on the plantation. Bring him outside, the Willie Lynch letter said. Line up all your slave men and line up all your slave women. And you're going to whip that buck, beat him into an inch of his life. Drag him, suffocate him, choke him, stomp him, punch him, humiliate the strongest one in front of the women and the other men. They will learn vicariously not to challenge your authority. And then after you have humiliated the biggest buck, the strongest buck, you then tar and feather that buck. You tie one leg to one horse going in one direction and you tie another leg to another horse going in the other direction. And you beat both horses so they run in opposite directions and tear that buck's body in half. You have effectively destroyed the black men's confidence in that brother. You have effectively destroyed the black woman's trust in that black man. The black woman will never look to him again for protection. And she will be so afraid that her son will grow up and make the same mistake and end up the same way that she will raise her son to be a wimp. The slave woman will raise her son to be a coward. The slave woman will raise her son to be a beta male. The slave woman will raise her son to never challenge or question white power again. Kyrie. This is not about a misunderstanding. This is about who do you think you are, Negro, to question our control of your community. We owned Michael Jordan. We owned every athlete y'all had. We owned every artist y'all had. We couldn't own Michael Jackson, so we killed him. We couldn't own Prince, so we killed him. We couldn't own Jimi Hendrix, so we